opportunity to present our work. Conventional EGDS can be used to detect macroscopic abnormalities, but it has several limitations in identifying microscopic lesions. Unfortunately, microscopic lesions are relatively frequent in patients undergoing upper endoscopy, and often they represent prinoplastic conditions, hence the need for biopsies and histological evaluation. Performing gastric biopsies, however, does not ensure a total protection from potential diagnostic mission errors for these reasons. In addition, in patients with abnormal or mild endoscopic findings, endoscopist only takes a few enteral samples or do not perform biopsies at all. Consequently, omission errors may increase. Performing gastric biopsies and using additional stains in all patients due to these limitations are not routine practice right now. And the issue becomes even more intriguing if we consider that many patients undergoing upper endoscopy are then found to be free of histologic lesions. A possible solution to the impasse could be the determination of gastric health at the time of endoscopy. In this way, the endoscopist could be alerted about the presence of abnormalities in the stomach during the examination and select the most appropriate operative diagnostic approach for each patient. A possible method to determine gastric health could be the analysis of gastric juice. Two reliable indicators could be the pH and the amount of concentration. The former reflects gastric capability to produce acid, and the latter the presence of H. pylori infection, and then directly the endogastritis. The aim of our study was to determine the potential contribution of real-time gastric juice analysis to the upper gastrointestinal endoscopy with particular regard to the efficiency of diagnosis and the optimization of resources. Okay, this is a retrospective analysis of a prospective cohort of 206 patients, of 260 patients referred for diagnostic EGDS. These patients were not taking anti-secretory drugs in the two weeks before the examination. The parameters evaluated were endoscopic powder, H. pylori infection, real-time gastric juice analysis, and histologic features. As to histology, it was performed by taking two entral and two fundic samples from each patient and staining them with dematocylinosine and immunohistochemical techniques. The parameters evaluated were H. pylori colonization, glandular atrophy, intestinal metabolism, ECL cells, and G cells. Acute and chronic inflammation, although evaluated, were not objective of the present study. As to real-time gastric juice analysis, it was performed by using EndoFaster, an innovative device that interposing between the endoscope and the suction system performs an ultra-fast analysis of gastric juice. And by evaluating in real-time the pH and the ammonium concentration allows the detection of the hypochloridic conditions and of H. pylori infection and communicate it to a, to a voice processor. Then, taking all the information from the endoscopic pattern, the histologic features, and the real-time analysis, we simulated six different diagnostic strategies. First three of these strategies are based on uh, uh, routine endoscopic practice, while the other three are based on real-time gastric juice analysis, specifically. In the first strategy, there is only the results from the endoscopic information. The second strategy contemplated both endoscopic information and the status of the enteral mucosa. The third strategy, the third strategy contemplated the endoscopic information and the histology from both antrum and the occipital mucosa. Strategy 4, 5 and 6 are based on real-time gastric juice analysis, so they contemplated the endoscopic pattern and histologic features only in hypochloridic patients, with biopsies only in the entrum in strategy 4, with biopsies in the entrum and in the oxyntic mucosa in strategy 5, and this the previous, but performing also immunohistochemistry in strategy 6. Then, taking the complete histological evaluation as a gold standard, we determine the diagnostic performance of each strategy. 
by evaluating how many pathological conditions identified with the complete histology would have been found by each strategy. Results. On the present table, there are the individual results of the strategies, and on the bottom row, there's the total pathological conditions identified. Now let's go to the details. On the basis of gastric juice pH, 25% of patients resulted to be hypochloritics, while the remaining 75 were normal chloritics. 220 pathological conditions were detected. Of these conditions, only the little part was in normal chloritic patients, while 85% of the lesions were in hypochloritics. <clears throat> A strong correlation was found between the pH value and the presence of histologic lesions. As you can see, the rate of patients with one or more histologic lesions increased proportionately at increasing pH values. Another significant correlation was found between the ammonium concentration and the H. pallor infection. Nearly all the infected patients were distributed above the cutoff point of 61 ppm of ammonium concentration. On the whole, Endofaster reported a good diagnostic rate for H. pallory. Both sensitivity and specificity were more than 90%. <coughs> How many pathological conditions were identified by each strategy? Here are the results. In particular, Diagnostic strategies based on real-time gastric juice analysis yield the detection rates comparable or even higher than those of strategies including biopsies for our patients but without gastric juice analysis. And this despite a fourfold lower number of biopsies performed. Conclusions. EGDS without biopsies is inadequate for a complete evaluation of the gastric mucosal status. Gastric mucosal lesions are correlated with hypoacidity and they can be predicted by gastric juice analysis. H. pallor infection can be predicted in real time by a simple and automated analysis of gastric juice. And the prediction of pathological conditions at the time of endoscopy allows the endoscopist to plan the most appropriate operative diagnostic approach for each patient, such as taking biopsies from the oxyntic mucosa, alerting the pathologist, ordering specific blood tests or additional states. Finally, it might be worth noting that hypochloridria is not only correlated with gastric malignancy, but also with a lot of other conditions that are of considerable clinical pathological importance and not easily detectable. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>